In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our service on this, the last Sunday after Trinity. Next Sunday will be in Kingdom season, and in those weeks running up to the beginning of Advent. We'll be in the last few weeks of this year, Year A, where the lectionary will change at the beginning of Advent. So gather together as God's family, let us ask forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had the courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God, in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others. Though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The two commandments in our reading from the Gospel of St Matthew are not original to Jesus. This is very old teaching. The command to love God is from Deuteronomy 6, chapter five, uh, 6 verse 5, and the command to love one's neighbour is found in Leviticus 19, verse 18. So, looking at the first one, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. These are the first lines of what was for the Jews their most important prayer. Every Jew knows this prayer by heart from their earliest days, 
and they recite it every morning and every evening. The prayer continues. These words which I enjoin on you today shall be written on your heart. You shall repeat them to your children and say them over to them, whether at rest in your house or walking abroad or your lying down and your rising. You shall fasten them on your hand as a sign, on your forehead as a circlet. You shall write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. Observant Jews quite literally carry out these instructions. The words of this prayer are contained in small boxes which they tie to their foreheads and their left arm during prayer. These small boxes are known as phylacteries and so powerful do they consider this prayer that the phylacteries are believed to bring them protection to all who wear them. The second command to love one's neighbour is to be found in the book of Leviticus where it is placed at the end of a whole list of rules regarding relationships with one's neighbour and its service as a kind of summary. But we should note that the context the neighbour referred to is quite clearly means a fellow Israelite, not a stranger. So we see that neither of these two commands is original to Jesus. But then neither is the placing of them together unique to Jesus. In certain Jewish writings they are placed side by side in a sort of parallelism. We can see an instance of this in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 28, where the lawyer asks Jesus what he must do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus asks him, what is written in the law? The lawyer replies, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And you must love your neighbour as yourself. Jesus then says, you are right, do this and life is yours. So although neither commandment is original to Jesus, there is nothing new about them being placed together. What is new is that Jesus presents them as dependent on each other. According to Jesus, they aren't separable from one another. And also new to him, he widens this definition of neighbour to include everyone. He even goes so far as to say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. According to Jesus, you cannot love God and hate your neighbour. Now, it might seem very simple observation, but one of the reasons the Jews may well have placed these two commandments together is simply because they begin with the words, you must love. The Hebrew mind love, wordplay and parallelism. Very evident in the Psalms where quite often two similar sounding phrases are put together, even though they mean the complete opposite. And although we can cite instances where the two commands were placed together, this may well have been for literary reasons rather than because they were considered to be of equal value. The rabbis often haggled over the relative hierarchy of various commands of the Lord. They drew a clear distinction between what they called light and heavy commandments. In their view, although these two were sometimes placed together, they were certainly not of equal weight. The greatest commandment was unquestionably to love God. But with Jesus, everything is given a deeper meaning. And although we can regard the conjunction of the two commandments as being merely connected by the Hebrew fondness of wordplay, there is something in it because the word that connects them is love. And it is love that Jesus is all about. As blessed Julian of Norwich said so wisely, love was his meaning and love should be our meaning. If we are to learn anything from it at all, anything from Jesus, we should learn how to love. We will see here that love for God and love for one's neighbour are quite inseparable. And that word neighbour has the widest possible meaning. Of course, we understand that our neighbour includes the people next door, but also includes family and all the people with whom we're acquainted. That's not difficult to cope with. But Christ's definition of neighbours includes, as we have seen, our enemies, our opponents, our rivals. This is much more difficult. But Christ's definition extends even wider. Christ 
includes those we have not met and do not know. It includes the furthest corners of the globe, people from our inner cities, people from whose culture and way of lives are different to ours. Jesus includes some members that society shuns, those who are marginalised in any way. Jesus also includes those who are hard to love. Yes, it's easy to love God. God's there in heaven and doesn't seem to bother us too much. We can formulate an idea of God and love that. It presents us with few difficulties. Much harder is to love not an idea, but a person. Much harder to love a person who's not attractive to us, one who falls, fails to meet up with our expectations, one who challenges our expectations, one who challenges our assumptions, one whose ugliness is more than skin deep. But then we have to show that our love is far more than skin deep. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, as we say together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Loving Lord, help us to always choose you. Hear our prayers we bring before you. We pray for the church that it may continue to pray for those who suffer and to hope for paths of peace in the Middle East, in the tormented Ukraine and in other regions wounded by war. Lord, in your mercy. As we approach all saints on the 1st of November, we pray to be guided by the saints and dedicate our lives to our faith in their honour. Help us to lead lives that inspire and encourage those around us through our Christian virtues. Lord, in your mercy. As we mark the commemoration of all the faithful departed on the 2nd of November, let us pray for all those who have died and are now seated in the kingdom of heaven. We remember them, we love them, we cherish them. Lord, in your mercy. As the clocks go back and British summertime comes to an end, we pray for those that are feeling troubled by the onset of winter months. May those unable to pay heating and electric bills and those who feel isolated and alone get help, support and companionship that they need. Lord, in your mercy. The storm Babet causes chaos across the UK with hundreds forced to flee their homes. We pray that those that are currently living in turmoil and disruption we pray especially for those who have lost their lives through incidents related to the storm. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are ill or who have asked for our prayers, including Margaret, Baby Lee, Helena, Pauline, Bill, Rachel, Anne, Mike, Sylvia, Karen, Lynn, Maggie, Vernon, Velma, Jenny, Pat, Darwin, Martinette, Tony and Marco. We pray that they may find strength in body, mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those whom we love that you have taken to yourself, especially for Ian and David. We ask you to comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, continue to guide and inspire us on our faith journey. Help us to hear you in the busyness of our every day. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing our next hymn.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Thank you, Father, for making us in our wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world, we should always thank you through Jesus, your Son. And say with the angels and everyone in heaven, together we sing. Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread. He thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, all of you drink from this cup because this is my blood. The new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit gentle as a dove on us and on these gifts. So with everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus. We may be full of your life and goodness. Help us to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. So let us pray. 
God of all grace, your son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And now we sing our post-communion hymn. It's good to have joined with you this week and I look forward to being with you uh, next time. We're a couple of months away now from Christmas Day and uh, once again we're organising on Christmas Day at Traverbin here uh, a Christmas Day dinner. It's a free Christmas Day dinner for anyone who finds themselves on their own. Uh, that would be good if you do need to be booked in um and uh just need to contact me um email address if you want to contact me for any reason s t j m o e c at gmail dot com it's uh good to have you with us wherever you are and our next celtic service at Rescola is on Sunday the 19th of November and that will have an opportunity to remember loved ones. It's got the theme of, of remember, a time to remember. I hope you stay safe and uh, if you have any reason to contact me feel free to do so. So the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Bye.